Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Missing Palmist. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Blackstone, the magic detective. What's Rhoda doing sitting in that chair with her eyes all covered? <laughs> Don't you think I look fetching in a blindfold, Don? Oh, sure. What's the idea? Show him, Blackstone. All right. Are you prepared to be baffled and mystified? Well, yes, go ahead. You see this object here in my hand, Don? Yes, it's a... Uh, Quiet. Uh, uh, let Rhoda tell you what it is. Oh, but she can't. She's blindfolded. Oh, yes, she can. Watch carefully. Rhoda, what am I holding here in my hand? You're holding a watch. What kind of a watch? It's a wrist watch. How on earth did she ever know that? She's blindfolded. This is magic, Don. Do it again, Blackstone. All right. And this time I let Don pick out the object he wants you to identify. So I'll know it isn't a trick. That's right. Well, let's see. Uh, well, here, what about this? Fine. Give it to me. What am I holding over my head, Rhoda? Tell me, Rhoda. A coin. And which side of the coin is up, Rhoda? Heads. Right, Don? Yes, but how does she know that? It's a trick. Well, it's a darn good one. It's wonderful. Sometimes it's too wonderful. Well, what do you mean? Rhoda means that sometimes that trick is used to fool the wrong people. Say, that sounds like a story. It is. I'll take this darn blindfold off and then we'll tell you about it. There. Well, Blackstone and I heard that an old friend of ours, the owner of a small circus, had died. So Rhoda and I went out to the circus to see Billy Slade, the advance man, who had called and said he wanted my advice. Oh, look. There's Madame Zender's tent. Oh, yeah. She's the palmist. People say that she's uncanny in her predictions. Well, uh, why don't you stop off, Rhoda? See this Madame Zender if you want to. I'll go on ahead and talk to Billy Slade. We'll meet you back here. Well, uh, if you're sure you don't mind... Oh, of course I don't mind. See you later, Rhoda. Cross my palm with silver, little lady, and I will tell you the secrets that the future holds. Come in, pretty lady, come in. Come in. Well, Slade, what seems to be on your mind? Well, fan my brow, Blackstone. I'm as worried as a coyote with two heads. Oh, what is it? Money, Blackstone, money. Oh, the circus in financial straits? I thought Pop Sears left a pile of money. Yeah, he did. Man and boy, the old dinosaur, saved up a mint of shekels. Well, then, what's bothering you? Well, Pop left everything he owned to a dried-up string bean of an ant of his. An ant? Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, what's bothering you, Slade? Oh, Mizuma, the old green. Here, look over here. Behind this here picture. You see? When I slide this panel back, there's a hole in the wall. Ah, cash, huh? Yeah, that's right. Pipe what's in it. So good glory, man. That money shouldn't be lying around like that. There must be $10,000 there. Well, that's what I say. But the old lady, Sears aunt, won't hear of me putting it in no bank. Well, well what, what does she want you to do with it? Uh, the old biddy lives down in Florida near our winter quarters. We had to hightail it down there as soon as we can make it, deliver the folding money to her to hide in her sock and then sell the show. That's orders. No matter how silly it all sounds, she's the boss now, and there ain't nothing I or anybody else can do about it. Well, that's a nasty responsibility, Slade. Yeah, you sure said a mouthful. Now, you know, I got a feeling I'm being shadowed. What? I think somebody's trying to figure where I'm keeping the scratch. Any idea who to suspect? No, not a one. Not... Well, I... hey, what's that noise? That man looking in the window. Uh, Ozini, what the double dyed devils are you doing snooping around? I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. That's all. Well, I'm busy. Get. I've got to get too, Slade. I left Rhoda down at Madame Zender's tent. Oh, mid camp? Yes. 
Well, we'll all walk down together. I'll put this stuff back in the safe. And, uh, you coming, Bozzini? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm coming. <laughs> Bozzini, this is Miss Brent. Uh, Rhoda, this is Bozzini, the knife thrower. He's Madame Zender's husband. How do you do? How do you do? Miss, I hope you won't think I'm fresh. But I'd like to try to hypnotize you. I go in for hypnotism as a sideline. Uh, it relaxes my nerves. <laughs> well, do you mind, Blackstone? No, no, go right ahead. I'll stay and watch. Ah, uh, you and your hypnotism. You'll give me a pain. You listen to this too, Zender. It may be interesting. Maybe. Well, what are you waiting for? Get busy. Uh, here is the crystal, Miss Brent. I want you to look deep into it. Put the past behind you. Try to form a mental picture of the future. I don't feel anything. Try it, please. Now, in your picture of the future, take whichever you prefer. Love, health, money. Whatever might catch your fancy. Oh, this is just rot. I am going to eat. Wait a few minutes more, please, Enda. Miss Brent, imagine that the darkness of night is spreading all about you as you train your thoughts upon the future. No, Bozzini, I can't take any more of this rot. I'm going to eat. Join me later. You hear? Well, I'm sorry, Bozzini, but I... I don't feel anything. <laughs> no matter how hard I try, I never can actually hypnotize anyone. Oh, uh... I forgot my cigarette case at Slade's quarters. Will you all walk back with me while I get it? Then we can have dinner together. You include me, Mr. Blackstone? Oh, certainly, certainly. Come on. The money. The money's gone. Impossible. What do you know about this, Pazzini? Mr. Slade, I don't know anything. You looked in through that blamed window while I was showing Blackstone the safe... You took that dough. But no. You forget, Mr. Slade, that I have been with you and Mr. Blackstone ever since I saw the hiding place. I didn't have a chance to steal the money. Ah, Bozzini, you must have stolen it. You're the only one who knew where it was hidden. I couldn't have been in two places at once, could I, Mr. Blackstone? No, Bozzini, you couldn't. Then I'm in the clear on this, Slade. Uh, may I use your phone, Slade? Well, sure, but... Uh... Police headquarters? Blackstone calling. Will you go to the station and arrest Madame Zender? She'll have a tin box containing $10,000 on her. Yes, we'll be down to identify. Grab him, Slade. Don't let Bazzini get away. Let go. You can't do this to me. I've got an alibi. Let go. Maybe we can't do it, Bazzini, but we've done it. And next time when you try to hypnotize someone, try not to have a magician around. <laughs> Bozzini's hypnotizing have to do with your grabbing him. And how did you know that Zender had stolen the dough? Well, Don, there's an old trick that lots of magicians use to signal their accomplices. In their spiels, they stress certain words. Bozzini, while he was seemingly trying to hypnotize Rhoda, was really telling Zender the location of the money. He said, if you remember, look into the crystal. Put your past behind you. Form a mental picture and so forth. He stressed the words, look behind you. Picture. And then he stressed the words, take money, catch night train. So I knew where we could lay hands on Zender. And no one would ever have caught on if they hadn't used the trick themselves, just as Blackstone and I have. So that's how you identify those objects while Rhoda was blindfolded, <laughs> huh? It's simple, mm -hmm. isn't it, once you know the code? <laughs> well, to you, maybe. But it was lucky for Slade you did, because another mystery was solved by magic. Well, by the way, Blackstone... Remember you promised us a coin trick? Uh, did I? You did. And you promised to use your own money. Oh, well, maybe that's why I forgot about it. <laughs> but uh, first I need a handkerchief. There's one right in your pocket. But remember, you promised a coin trick. All right, I'll get around to that. First I spread the handkerchief over the fingers of my left hand. Is that fair enough? For a handkerchief trick, yes. You still can't get money off your mind, can you? All right. Here's a quarter. Ooh, mine for keeps? No, no, yours for the trick. I want you to lay the coin right here in the center of the handkerchief. Right where you're poking the little pocket with your finger? Exactly. Does that look fair enough, Don? Well, I'd say so, considering that Rhoda is placing the coin in the handkerchief. Oh. And there it goes, out of sight. 
Now, are you sure it's really there? Of course I am. Aren't you, Don? Oh, I certainly am. Good. That makes you both wrong. Now, when I take the corner of the handkerchief like this and snap it like that... The coin is gone. Well, it vanished all in a snap. And that is the coin trick. I can shake the handkerchief all I want, but the coin is really gone. And, and now you're putting the handkerchief back into your pocket. So I can show my hands empty and take a bow. <laughs> but if I can't figure how it's done, will you explain the trick? All right, Rhoda. I'll be right back with all the answers. <laughs> Stone, are you ready to show us how a coin can vanish out of a handkerchief? Well, first, he spreads the handkerchief over his left hand. Not yet, Rhoda. I'm showing you how this time. First, take a look at the fingers of my left hand. But, well, there's a rubber band around your thumb and first two fingers. It was so tight I didn't notice it. And before anyone does notice it, you place the handkerchief over your hand. Then make a pocket with your finger for the coin. Well, here's the coin, Blackstone, but I still don't see how it can vanish. Well, now, you just keep watching, Don. When I poke the coin down into the cloth, it goes inside the rubber band that's hidden beneath. Yeah, I realize that much. Now I move my fingers under the handkerchief and the rubber band slips off. Look close and you'll see what happened. What? Why, it tightened right around the pocket. And the coin is inside there where it can't come out. That's why I shook the handkerchief. Now, watch again. I shake it hard like this. Yeah, but the coin still stays there. And the hidden pocket is behind the handkerchief where we can't see it. That finishes the trick. All I have to do is put the handkerchief in my pocket, coin, rubber band and all, and then show my hands are empty. And take a bow. You deserve one for uh, that trick. Well, I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. <laughs> with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of The Ladder of Wealth and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. (laughs) 